Hey everybody, welcome back to Whiteboard Finance. My name is Marco and I'm here to help you master your money and build your wealth. In this video, we're gonna be talking about buying a car versus leasing a car and which option is better for you. So in the first half of this video, I'm gonna actually go over a hypothetical scenario using numbers. That way you can see how the math actually works and how it plays out. And in the second half of the video, I'm going to give you an anecdotal point of view from my personal perspective and why leasing and buying is situational for everybody's situation. So let's pretend like we're buying a subcompact car, okay? Let's just call it like a Honda Civic, Toyota Corolla. It's essentially a car to get you from point A to point B, right? So we have one option of buying the car over here. We have the other option of leasing the car and in both these scenarios, let's pretend like we're going to uh, keep the car. So we have a keep scenario. So you can buy it or buy it after your lease is up. Make sense? Okay. So the purchase price, let's pretend like we're going to be paying $17,700 for this subcompact car. Our down payment is going to be $2,000. And since this is actually dealing with real math and interest rates and for the sake of not using a calculator, I have this all pre-written down. So um, bear with me here. So the interest rate is going to be 4.22%. This is typical on a car loan. If you're a you know, 800 credit score, it may be a little bit lower than this, um, but this is the average rate right now. Uh, term. Let's pretend like we're financing this vehicle over the course of three years. And then what our payment is going to be using these numbers is actually 465 a month, okay? So if we're actually gonna be buying this car, let's pretend like we're actually selling it as well. So our sales price after three years, let's just say we're gonna get 12 grand for it, okay? Now with the lease, let me use a little different marker here. That way we can actually differentiate. Let's say the down payment, because you're not actually purchasing the car, is $2,000. The lease term is going to be the same thing as our buy. It's going to be three years. The payment for this, now remember these aren't loan payments. These are just payments that you're using to buy the car and hopefully you guys can see this green marker okay. 159 a month, and then the buyback. So at the end of your lease term, you actually have the option to purchase the car. Uh, it's gonna be, let's call this 12.2, right? So $12,200. Okay, so let's run through this scenario very quickly here. And again, hopefully you guys can see those uh, numbers in green. So if you want to keep the car, we have the buy scenario, we have the lease scenario, okay? So for buying the car, how much money do we have into this deal so far? Well, we know we have the down payment, which was $2,000, okay? We know that we paid four sixty-five dollars a month, okay, for the course of three years. So that's four sixty-five dollars times 36 months, four sixty-five times 36 and this equals a total of 18,740, okay? Now we're gonna lease the car, okay? But we're gonna buy it back at the end of three years. So how much money do we have out of pocket for this lease? We have our down payment, which was two grand, okay? We have the payments, which is 159 a month, times 36 months, okay? And then we have the buyback price of $12,200 for a total of $19,924. So we can see here, just by keeping this car, okay? To buy the car outright from the beginning cost us a total of $18,740 over three years of ownership. To actually lease the car over three years and buying it back at this purchase price, it's costing us $19,924.
So obviously you can see that buying the car is more economical. Now let's pretend like we're giving up the car because most people in their lease, uh, there's a higher percentage that actually give back the car after that three year period. Let's see very quickly how the math shakes out on that. Okay, so this is for keeping. This is for, let's call it giving back. So remember we have 18,740 into it for the buy. However, we're actually selling it for $12,000 because we own the car after three years. So this actually comes out to be $6,740. Okay, because think of it like an internal rate of return. If we have a piece of real estate that's giving us uh, monthly rent, 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 and we go to sell the house, not only did we realize the rent, but we also realized the um, the sale of the house, the money that we're getting for the house. This is similar. Obviously, you're not getting paid to drive your car, um, but you own it for a period of time, but you actually have an asset at the end of the three years to be able to sell. So we're actually getting a uh, cost of ownership is $6,740 after three years. Okay, if you want to lease the car and give it back, all you have into it is the $2,000 down payment and all of your payments, which was 159 times 36, which gives you a grand total of $7,724. So even in this scenario, if you're giving back the car and you do get back 12 grand for it, uh, you're still up ahead about $1,000, okay? So mathematically, this will be the first part of the video. Mathematically, it makes sense to buy a car, right? But let's talk about people's life situations, okay? What if you're someone that doesn't like to keep your cars, okay? And you're someone that needs a new car every three years. So in my personal opinion, leasing would probably be better for you because if you're someone that's giving up cars every three years, you're not necessarily gonna be someone that's sitting there every weekend detailing your car, vacuuming your car, you know, changing the oil you know, meticulously and keeping all your service records and doing all that stuff. You're not a quote unquote car person or a car guy, if you will. On the other hand, you have a car guy who knows how to buy a car right and he enjoys his vehicle and he truly takes care of it and he knows he's gonna keep the vehicle for a long period of time. So that's the key, so think about it. The longer you own your car, okay, yes, it's going down in value, but the less you're paying for it per month, okay? So if you bought a car for $10,000, okay, and you own it for 10 years, you can uh, roughly estimate that it cost you about $1,000 a year to own the car, right? Now, let's talk about maintenance because the people that lease will always go back to saying, hey, I don't gotta worry about my maintenance, you know, it's covered, it's in the plan, blah, blah, blah. Some things are, some things aren't, some things fall back on you. So you're essentially repairing a rental car. All your, when you're leasing, that's just a fancy word for renting, okay? It's like uh, renting an apartment versus buying a home, okay? At the end of the day, I'm all about ownership, even though mathematically sometimes it may not make sense depending on how long you own the car. However, if you care for your car and you own it for an extended period of time for many years, you will definitely be under the cost per month uh, when it comes to a person who's actually leasing. Uh, now with leases, you also have to remember that you're always limited to a certain number of miles every year and for every mile that you go over, it's gonna cost you 15, 20, 25 cents a mile, right? So if you wanna go take a road trip with your friends, you have to be cognizant of that. You have to watch you know, how much you drive every week, every month, every year, so you don't go over those miles. When you own the car, you can put on as many miles as you want. Now, let's talk about maintenance for the ownership of a car. So the IRS, is, uh, they typically have at range anywhere from 50 to 58 cents a mile is what it typically costs to write off expenses on a car. And believe it or not, that's actually a very accurate number. So given that 50 to 58 cents a mile, um, I believe the current valuation is 58 cents. It depends on how much your maintenance really is gonna be in owning these cars. So if you own a high-end German car, it's obviously gonna be a little bit more expensive than that. If you own a rare you know, Ferrari, it's gonna be you know, $1.50 a mile in maintenance. Uh, and if you own you know, a subcompact car like this Honda Civic or this Toyota Corolla, it may even be less. So at the end of the day, I'm gonna take a page out of Dave Ramsey's book here. Um, car leases, in my opinion, um, it's the most expensive way to drive a car. 
um, because at the end of the day, it's not even yours. And when you do go to actually buy that car, the dealership is tacking on fees just because they need to make money somehow on that vehicle, right? So you're overpaying from the car from the start. You're overpaying for the car when you go to actually buy it, when you're buying your lease out. And then you're always, you know, while you own it during the lease, you're always worrying about miles and maintenance and things like that. So now here's the final part to this video. What if you get the ability to finance a car and own it with 0%? Uh, you also have to realize those promotions with 0% financing, although if you may have the budget in the car and you may be able to pay for it day one, yeah, it makes sense to you know, use the 0% financing and invest your money elsewhere. Uh, however, you also have to realize that you're paying full, full, full sticker price for the car on those promotions. You're not getting any money off and you're definitely not getting a deal. And since we have human nature, instead of using that you know, 10, 15, 20 grand um, to pay for the car up front, we're going to finance it for 0% and then we're going to go on a vacation. Then we're going to go buy those new speaker systems that we want. We're going to buy the new MacBook Pro, et cetera, et cetera. And then guess what? oh crap, you know, the 0% financing, you know, I'm paying more for the car than I originally intended because I'm using my car budget to pay for other things. So I hope this helped. I know this is an oversimplified version, uh, but at the end of the day, the math definitely is there. And I did use a lot of hypotheticals of, you know, what the sales price is going to be and things like that. However, I just use the typical depreciation rate. However, that is vehicle specific. So I know I'm kind of rambling here, but it is important to actually understand, you know, buying versus leasing a car. Uh, in my personal opinion, I'm going to buy cars all day long because I do enjoy working on them. I do enjoy detailing them and I do enjoy finding good deals. And typically when I go to sell a car, um, I've never necessarily lost that much money. I've always either broke even or made money on the cars that I've owned. Um, but that's because I buy right. So you make your money when you buy the car, guys. So at the end of the day, I hope this helped you. If you're someone that absolutely needs to lease a car and have a new car every three years, by all means, go for it. Just know that you are renting a car and you're renting it in the most expensive way possible. Thank you so much and have a prosperous day. Mm -hmm.